this word just be stirred up in my spirit. People, people do that. They think you're not worthy. So they'll try to talk you out of something that God has said. Yes. See? That's why Paul said, I'm going to bypass all them disciples and I'm going to go ahead and start doing the work of the Lord because they're going to try to talk me out of what Jesus told him previously. So when you look in the book of Romans, guess what he says? He says, I am a slave for Christ. Some translations, guess what he says? Some translations say, I am a debtor. Not only to the Jews, but all too also for the barbarian. <laughs> what did he say? He said, God didn't call me to be like Paul, to be like Peter or Timothy. <laughs> Or oh, Matthew. God called me to go to the barbarian. He called me to go where I want to go. He called me to go where the places where people shun. He called me to go to the places where they called them dogs. Come on, What does that mean? That means that whatever God has forgiven you and delivered you from, now he holds you responsible. If God delivered you from liquor, you're supposed to be talking to somebody that's hell bound by liquor. Y'all looking at me. I ain't playing with y'all. If you were hell bound by laying up, then you're supposed to be talking to somebody that's bound by laying up. If you were hell bound by drugs and God took you out and delivered you from drugs, then you need to be talking to somebody that's hell bound by drugs. So God says, since you're a persecutor, I'm going to send you to the barbarian. He told Paul, he said, since you are a persecutor and you persecuted me and you killed my people, I'm going to send you to the Gentiles because now I hold you responsible from where I have delivered you. So when I say I'm hell bound, what does that mean? Apostle Paul was so hell bound to the point to where he even got a job putting up tents. He said, I got to get a job putting up tents because, because I need some help. I need some money and won't nobody give me no money. Y'all looking at me. So you mean to tell me a man, a man that wrote the third of the Bible went and started putting up tents because he says, I'm not going to stop no work because ain't nobody communicating with me. Oh, y'all. Oh, Jesus. Y'all hear me? Listen, you all be looking at somebody and say, I ain't going to let money stop me. Why? Because you are now held bound by the word of God that was spoken over you. And you are not supposed to allow anybody to detour what God has said about you, your family, your children. What he said about your finances, your life, your spiritual life, your mental life, your physical life, everything that God said, you're not supposed to allow anybody to detour you and change your mind. The second part of the service, tell somebody, say, I'm all in. I'm all in. Now watch this. Now this is the part of the service where it should steal you up some. Because when I say I'm all in, the Lord spoke this to me last week. And I was riding down the road, and he says, you got to be all in. I said, what are you talking about? He said, the reason why my people are not advancing, he says, because they treat me like a temp service. 
I said, Lord, what's going on? I said, I see this one, this one. They ain't advancing, they ain't advancing, they ain't doing this. They not getting full benefits. He says, because they treat me like a temp service. They trying to get to the company through a temp service instead of getting hired on. He says, when you get hired on, you receive the full benefits of that company. But when you treat me like a temp service, I can't give you full coverage. I can't give you full medical. I can't give you full life insurance. I can't give you a 401k policy because you are through a temp service. So when you teach, when, see look, I'm going to tell you something. You know what a temp service is. A temp service is you serving God on probation. Come on, God. I know some of y'all want to come in here and hear one of them shouting messages. One of them shouting messages that make you shout all over the place. But you have to realize that we can't treat God like a temp service if you want the full benefits from God. Now, let, let me explain myself because, you know, sometimes you'll get in a place of like, well, you know, we shouldn't serve God. We shouldn't serve him to get something out of him. I agree. I don't serve God to get something out of him. I serve him because I love him. You serve God from your heart because you love him. You serve God because you care. You serve him because you don't want to die and go to hell. You, you know, people just don't get that. The Bible says, he says, if you believe, you shall be blessed. And if you don't, you're down already. If you believe, you receive eternal life. If you don't, you're damned already. So, so Jesus even said in scripture, he says, I give you an ultimatum. You can either receive eternal life or you can be damned already. And that's even before you die. The damned already means once you make a decision that you don't believe in, in Jesus, you, then he said, then you are already damned already. You understand? But now look at somebody say, God has perks. And I, I'm going to explain this to you. Go to Psalms. Go to Psalms. Go to Psalms. Let me show you something. Boy, this is good. You know why? Because he is teaching us that we got to be all in. You can't just be halfway in. You got to be all in. And I'm going to say some stuff that's going to shake some folks, but I got to be real. Some of y'all looking at some folks in this ministry, and they just got in here, and y'all worry how they get blessed like that. You know why? Because some of you have been here for 30 years and still ain't all in. But when they came in, and it was new to them and it was fresh to them, they plunged in. Yeah. They just fell in there. They stood, listen, if, if, if yeah. imagine this being a pool. Imagine the ministry being a pool and you standing by the pool and you saying, Lord, I just thank you. Ooh, it's cold. Ooh, you dipping your toe in there. You dipping your foot in there. You trying to test the water out. You wait, that pool right here, you just, you trying to test. Ooh, it's cold. But the folks who just now coming, the Bible said the, 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 the last should be first and the first shall be last, right? So when new people come in, guess what? They just stand by the pool and they just fall in it. Boom. Submerge themselves in it. They say we all in, we all in. Y'all been in here 25 years, still don't come to Bible study. We got folks that ain't been here, but they hadn't even been here a year yet. They come to every Bible study. And you looking at them like they crazy. Wondering how they getting blessed like that. Why? Because they said I'm all in. They say I'm all in, 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 I'm all in. Why? Because they're sitting in Bible study, soaking it up, soaking it up, soaking it up. God is watching, and they're soaking it up. You know one thing about God, 
Let me tell you something about God. God tried to get the word to the Jews. His own people that were called by his name. He was trying to bless them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said they didn't want it. So he gave it to the Gentiles. When you don't want something, God will say, I don't care. Fine. I'm not going to waste my time on you no longer. I'm going to give it to somebody that you feel they not worthy to have. Oh, y'all looking at me. Oh, Jesus. He said, I'll give it to somebody that you feel they not worthy to have. And a lot of times we get mad because we see folk getting blessed like that. But let me tell you something. It's because they are fully dedicated, fully committed, fully persuaded. Don't you know over in Deuteronomy chapter 28, he says, if you fully obey the commands and my statutes, bless shall you be in the city, bless shall you be in the field, bless shall your seed be, bless shall your basket be. That's what she said. She said, and the blessings of God will overtake you. But it said, but if you do not, curse shall you be in the city. Curse shall you be in the field. Curse shall your seed be. Curse, curse, curse. All that seed. And that's what you, all you have to do is look at somebody and say, you got to get in line. Because see, what happens is, you're not just part of a ministry, you're a part of a vision. Yes. And when you don't take part in that vision, the vision can't go on unless somebody push it. Thank you, Father. What that mean? That means that somebody gonna push it. Yes, thank you. And then it won't be the people that you think gonna push it. Come on, there you go. It's gonna be the folk that you don't expect to push it. Because God been like this, you've been here all this time. And I've been trying to get you to push. Since you don't want to push, I'm going to send some new folks in here. I'm going to give them the ability to push. Y'all looking at me. You know what God told me the other day? He said, farmers get discounts on seed. Oh, y'all didn't like that one. I'm going to say it over here then. Farmers get discount on seed. The scripture said he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So once you become a farmer, you get discount on seed. Why? Because you're sowing in a field. You're not just a gardener, you're not just a person say, I want to grow some okra in the back of my yard. Are y'all looking at me? I'm trying to help somebody. I'm, I'm, I want to grow okra in the back of my yard. I want to grow some tomatoes and some peppers. No, you are a farmer. You say, I want to go, I want the whole field. I want the whole field of corn. I want to, I want a whole field of corn, and we're going to pluck that corn, we're going to shut that corn, and it's going in the market for sale. And then the next year, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to grow some sugar cane. And we're going to get that sugar cane, and then we're going to put it up for sale. And guess what? They ain't got to, listen, they ain't got to pay for the seed like a regular gardener pays for a seed. They get discounts on seed because when they get seed, they get it in a, say it again, bulk. <laughs> they get it in the bulk. See? So when I say that being all in has perks, it has perks. Look at this. Look at this. Go back to uh, uh, the book of Psalms. He said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. When you bless the Lord, you say good things about him. Everywhere you go, you talk about him. You talk about how good God is. 
how the service is. Yeah. Yeah. You say, come on down here to the service right. so you can see how good God is. Yeah. You start telling them about how he blessed you, how he kept you, how he delivered you. When you bless the Lord, you come in his house, you lift up your hands, you praise his name. You, you are not sitting down like a stump on the log. You bless him. Why? Because he says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. That means my soul is blessing him. Not my body. Y'all, oh, oh, we finna get somewhere. My soul is blessing him, not my body. Your body only just play a part. But your soul has everything what goes on with the body. That's why when the woman who, who, lost, her, who lost her son went to Elijah and he, she actually said, uh, he said, is, is everything good with thee, well with thee? Guess what she said? Everything is well with my soul. She was feeling some kind of way with her mind and her body and she was desperate but she said all is well with my soul so when I bless him I bless him from my soul good God am I I wish I had some help in here I bless him from my soul why you think the devil wants your soul y'all looking at me you thought he cared about your body he don't care about your body because your body go to the dust. But he wants your soul. Because the soul is where you worship. <laughs> now what if the woman would have said, listen, I just, you know, I just don't know. Uh, go tell the prophet I just don't know about this. I just don't know. But she spoke something. She spoke something that did, that did what? Change the course of life. When she said all is well with my soul, she was speaking something because she knew that the prophet had the ability to raise her son back from the dead. So when you bless God from your soul, guess what happens? You could have been dealing with some stuff through this week, but you came in here and said, I bless him with my soul. You go back to your job on Monday and it seems like there's been a shift. Why? Because, because you're blessing them with your soul it changed the course of nature. They could have, fired, they could have said you fired on Friday but you came in here on Sunday. You blessed him with your soul but they call you back on Monday. Everybody got laid off but you. Why? Because you changed the course of nature. You could have had surgery that Monday, but you came in on Sunday. Bless them with your soul. Didn't have to have surgery. Oh, y'all looking at me. You, 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 you changed the course. Listen, you could, your credit could be 300. But you need a car by next week. The course of nature means it is what it is. And there's no way around it. But when you bless him with your soul, he changes the no way around it to the impossible. To the possible, I mean. He changes the course of nature. You know you got a credit 300, you can't get nothing. But you came and you blessed them with your soul. And you step in there. And they say, you know what? I usually don't do this. See, I love it when they say stuff like that. I love it because I, I start getting ready to shout right in front of them. I be sitting up there. I usually don't do this. Yeah, I know you usually because this is an unusual situation. And you're dealing with an unusual person. You're not dealing with a regular person. You're dealing with somebody that's unusual who serves an unusual God that can do some unusual things.
You know what, you know what David was saying? David was saying, I bless the Lord because I didn't forget. That's right. Do you know that song that say, I will never forget what you done for me? I will never forget how you set me free. I will never forget how you brought me out. I will never forget, no, never. That's what David said. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me. He said, like, guess what? I got benefits that you ain't got. I got benefits. Folks calling you trying to wonder how you do that, girl. You don't even work. You work over there. You flip burgers at Wendy's. How you get that, girl? Where that come from? How you able to do that? How you get that business? How you get that car? How you get that house? How you get the loan? How you do this? How you do that? You tell them I got benefits. My my insurance policy is is better than 100. I got 100 percent insurance. I got medical insurance. I got full benefits. I serve the Lord, and He got some good benefits.